Everyone knows that you will run faster if you are relaxed. This means all the right muscles fire at the right time, and any muscles not involved in the movement quickly relax to recharge for the next cycle. Knowing all this however, the best sprinters in the world still tense up in the later stages of the race. And there is only one who doesn't. We don't think of ourselves as machines, but in many ways, that's how we perform. An engine will blow up shortly after exceeding the rev limit. Fortunately, the human body has a natural safeguard against that, so exceeding the red line of intensity will only fatigue the muscles much quicker. In sprinting it means your muscles will tighten up and start working against yourself. Basically, no one can operate at peak intensity for more than a few seconds without a significant drop in performance. For this reason, high-performing athletes stay relaxed even during the most intensive fights. They also use various tricks to take a little break while forcing their opponent to keep working. Some of them even use dirty tricks, all to catch their breath and damage the opposition. I do poke people in the eyes, and it's very illegal, uh, but I do it. After all, at the end of the fight, having just a little more in the tank than your opponent can be the difference between winning and losing. Similarly, in athletics, finding time to relax even in the shortest sprint races means you cross the finish line faster. One of the first elite sprinters to mention the concept of sprinting with contrasting intensity was two-time 1972 Olympic champion Valery Borzov. According to him, he was able to switch gears up to 10 times in a 100-meter race. This allowed him to stay perfectly relaxed all the way to the finish line. What this particular technique means can be seen in Flo Jo's step frequency graph when she set the 100-meter world record. Just one second into the race she reaches a frequency of 4.5 steps per second. The following second as her strides become longer she smoothly increases her frequency to the maximum in the race. Here comes the first break for rest, as she eases off the intensity and runs easy for the next 3 seconds, while constantly increasing her stride length. 5 seconds into the race she gradually begins to apply more pressure to reach the second peak of her stride frequency somewhere around the 60 meter mark. This is the point where true sprinting skills are tested, as most runners have reached or are close to their top speed. Those who keep trying hard will tense up and defeat themselves. Flo Jo eases off again as she knows that after reaching top speed, the harder you try, the quicker you decelerate. So she keeps playing around with intensity all the way to the finish. These tiny rest intervals allowed her to stay fresh and relaxed throughout the race. That's why Florence Griffith Joyner could afford to smile even in the Olympic finals. Interestingly, very similar technique, called burn and coast, is used by drivers who wish to reduce fuel consumption. It gained popularity due to the rise in gasoline prices in the 2000s. At the elite level of sprinting, where the strength advantage has reached the point of diminishing returns, the competitive edge, for the most part, comes from a neuropsychological perspective and capitalizing on the mistakes of others. It's not how fast you run, it's how you run fast.